it could well seem that all these campaigning points are already halfway to fruition. Equal pay, for instance, is promised by 1975. It's a Labour commitment that the Tories are implementing now. Well, the government is committed in theory uh, to equal pay, but the problem is the actual wording of the bill. It's very uh, vaguely worded, and it also includes in it the assessment of the value of the job done and its equality. And we think this is where the problem is going to lie, that women's uh, work will be assessed as of not so much importance and will be paid less than men. What we would like to see is workers control the women in the factory uh, including the men, deciding um, and evaluating the worth of the work. What distinguishes women's lib is this radical thinking, an infection caught from America. Until now, British women have been less vocal than the Americans. They don't like explaining themselves, they don't like leaders. Most of all, they dislike a press that views them as shrill, bra-burning man-haters. Trying to define the people and the thought of women's lib the Guardian newspaper sent out questionnaires to the various groups. Woman's editor Mary Stott breaks down the different elements. There certainly is a very strong left-wing element, very strong indeed, and, and linked partly with, uh, with trade unions, with international socialists. I think this particular group was greatly strengthened by the strike of the Ford, Ford ladies, and there's no doubt this is, this is a large element. Um, I think an awful lot are university girls uh, who seem to have very good groups. Of course, they're left-wing too, naturally, and they think it'd be an awfully nice idea to change the whole of the society, but they're really exploring ideas, and they're exploring them to a great extent, I think, with young men, which I think is splendid, and most of them find that after some initial setbacks and, and teasing, they do get the men on their side. And the third group is perhaps the one I'm most interested in myself. It is quite simply housewives, um, the old housebound housewife. What the left wing with its international socialist support wants to attack is a capitalist society which they say assumes for its own profit that all single women want to get married and all married women want a man providing money for life. Once, reasonable enough assumptions. But most girls today expect more than just marriage out of life. And the fact that the number of girls who are now staying on in sixth forms have more than doubled in six years seems to confirm that. 40% of married women do already work. More would if their chances of getting a child into nursery school weren't 10 to 1 against. It's nice, but it's not the answer if husbands help out. That, says Women's Lib, enslaves them too. Geared to the idea that all women are likely to be dependent, are tax, legal and welfare provisions. Here, for example, are just a few areas of difficulty. Higher purchase usually requires a male guarantor. A married woman's income is taxed as part of her husband's. Her sickness benefit is 30 shillings less than his. With economics like this, a woman needs a man, and the adverts persuade her to look the way men want her to be. This portrayal of women as sexual objects angers women's lib. If men find that trivial, they might look at it this way. It helps explain why women's lib members threw smoke bombs and plastic mice at last year's Miss World contest. To them it was the height of oppression. What comes up here is really the, their responsibility uh, to other women. The fact is that they are, in, in any sort of beauty contest, they are going to be chosen not as individuals, but as uh, representatives of men's idea of what is what makes up a beautiful and ideal woman. And this is a figure that is going to be promoted all over the world, or, you know, and directly shown to women as being what they are supposed to be. And what we are emphasizing is that isn't what we're supposed to be at all. We're just supposed to be us, ourselves. And, and that's what's really important, and not the glamour and the size of your bottom or your tits or whatever. Many feel that marriage, as we know it, must end if this kind of marketing is to cease. The difficulty is persuading working-class women, and there's a labour force of more than nine million to be won over. Do other groups around the country feel quite as radically as you do, or are you, in a sense, using the movement to get radical views across? 
Well, there are several socialist women groups around the country, and um, obviously this is one of their roles to try and um, bring a left politics into the women's big movement. But I get around to quite a lot of groups, and I find that um, many of them are already involved in working with women in industry or are very concerned about they how they can get involved. And uh, I find this very, uh, very welcome sign. I think it's the only way forward for the movement. The night cleaners have May Hobbs. Fed up with £12 a week, she fought for union backing and £16 and found that she and her fellow cleaners were being sacked. Now we're going to start having her our way because they're getting very frightened, these contractors, I'm telling you. When they, have to, when they phone you up and they tell you to keep off their back and things like that, you know, She's still finding it difficult to unionise women, even with women's lib support, perhaps because women are more easily frightened. Yes, I think it is, because men, I mean, men are more sort of perhaps united than women. But I mean, my just, I mean, Donetsk gets wrong, because all the women are getting united now. I mean, even the cleaners, we've got some right militant ones that couldn't care two monkeys about the contractors, just go and tell them to run and stuff themselves in the lake and things like that. Could you have got where you have done without the help from the women's lib people? No, I couldn't have. No. Many people feel that smashing the system's no answer. Not all of them men. Lillian Nenton, for example, was a suffragette. There's every right for them to go on fighting, but I do not think that there's any right for them to fight in the way that the suffragettes did, because the suffragettes had no other weapon. Now, what do you mean by that? We, had, we would not have gone about breaking windows, burning buildings, getting in prison, going on hunger strike, and doing all the uncomfortable things we did if there'd been any other way of doing it. But we hadn't a vote amongst us. You personally did all these things? I did. Were you one of the people who was forcibly fed? Oh, yes, but that's immaterial. <laughs> you know, I don't go into unpleasant things if it can be avoided. Yes, I was one of the most militant of the militant suffragettes. Tenuously held together as they sometimes are, women's lib groups could divide politically, but not disappear. With new applications coming into one group at the rate of 40 a week, they have an air of healthy growth. <laughs>